Okay, this sermon's entitled, Quick and Powerful. I'd like to do another sermon on the subject of the power of God and the power of God's word. So I'd like to open up with prayer and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. I just pray that you'll um, enlighten us and open up our eyes to some more truth on this subject. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the Bible teaches that... Um, <clears throat> God is powerful, and the gospel is the power of God. So let's open up with a few verses, just randomly, in um, Isaiah chapter 30, the first three verses. It says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my, at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at, just, let's look at the gospel message. The gospel message is powerful because, number one, it takes a hell-bound, condemned sinner, and if believed, of course, the gospel's not going to do anything, it's not going to have any effect on anybody if the person does not believe it. But, but therefore, if a person does believe the gospel, they are saved forever. And so therefore, God's power is, is exhibited there in the fact that a person went from being condemned to completely saved and completely justified. They went from a state of condemnation in hell to a state of salvation you know, in heaven. So that, that tells you right there how powerful it is. You know, it's God's word that is able to do that. It's God that's able to, God is the one that does it. He's the one that saves. So let's just take a look at Romans chapter 116. Romans chapter 116, where it talks about the power of God. And we're going to look at a bunch of verses here on the power of God. It says, For I am not ashamed of the, of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So power comes from the gospel message. You know, when a person preaches and they leave the gospel out, they're probably going to have, have a very powerless or a, a sermon that's lacking in power, lacking in dent, lacking in strength, lacking in force, lacking in, you know, dynamo. It's just going to be a, a lame, you know, basically a session of lip service. That's why it's very important to put the, pow the power of the gospel into the, in the sermon. Tell people about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, because that's where God's power was manifested. You know, in the fact that that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Okay, turn to Hebrews chapter thirteen. Hebrews chapter thirteen. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this concept. Hebrews chapter 13, in verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So that, that's a, that, there we go. That's an example of God you know, manifesting his power. He brought Jesus Christ from the dead back to life. And that take, it would take power to do that, and that's what the power of God has done. And anyone who believes on Christ, anyone who's saved by the grace of God, they also will be that will be brought to eternal life by the power of God. Okay, that, the Bible's clear on that. He, it, it, the reason why Christ died was so we could go to heaven. That's the whole point. So now let's take a look at some more verses on the power of God. And let me explain to you why some people do not understand the power of God. Number one, if you're not saved, that you're not going to understand this at all. It doesn't, it's not going to make any sense. If you're not reading the Bible, if you're not you know, digesting God's word, if you're not just you know, feeding yourself the word of God, and just you know, learning it, and and allowing it to take effect, you know, of your entire life, then you're not going to know, you're not going to understand the power of God either. Now Jesus Christ talked about this in Matthew chapter 22. It'll start off with verse 26. Likewise, the second also, and the third unto the seventh, and last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. And now look at verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them. Ye do err. Err means you're wrong. You're making a mistake. You do err. Okay? Not knowing the scriptures. In other words, not recognizing the scriptures. Not being acquainted with the scriptures. Okay? You're in error for doing this. And then look what else it says. Nor the power of God. So he's making a twofold statement here. He's saying you are basically devoid of any scriptural knowledge. 
and you, you don't know anything about the power of God because the power of God is described in the scriptures. The scriptures talk about the power of God. In fact, it's the word of God that, that brought this whole universe, the whole universe and this whole planet and everything that's, that's, that's here. It's the, it's the power of God. It's, it's the word of God that brought it all into existence. So that tells you right there that it would have to be very powerful in order to do something like that. It's an amazing feat. It's not, it's not anything that, you know, that a human being in our limited, finite, you know, you know, mental state can, can comprehend or cognize. So let me go over a few verses that prove that it's the word of God that brought life into existence and that, that exhibits or exemplifies God's, you know, illimitable power, you know. It's, it's illimitable in that it, it, there's no limit to it. Okay, so let me go over a few verses that talk about that. Okay, now let's turn to Psalm 33. Psalm 33, let's just start with verse 1. It says, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Look at verse 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So that, that right there, like I said, it exemplifies God's, you know, perfect power. You know, God's, you know, unprecedented power. Now, let's keep reading, though, because that's not the only verse that talks about this. Okay? He gathereth the waters of the sea together as an, as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Now, look at verse 9. For he spake, and it was done. And the word done there is a reference to Genesis 1-3, and it means created. He spake, and then the world was created. Okay, so that tells you how God did it. He spoke his own, his own word. Okay, and then it goes on to say, He commanded, and it stood fast, or stood firm. So God, God commanded, you know, life to exist. And therefore, that tells you how powerful God is, and how powerful his very word is. Okay, so let's take a look at some more verses on this. Turn over to Hebrews chapter number 4. That, the title of the sermon is found in verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4. <clears throat> now the reason why I'm preaching this is, let, to, is to let people know if God's word is this powerful then we need to be reading it every day because it's going to have a powerful effect on our lives if we read it see a lot of people are mistaken they think that when a person gets saved God does a transforming work in their life and that's not true God does a transforming work in your life as you read the Bible as you get into his word and get sanctified in his word then you'll see a transforming effect in your life. But it doesn't happen automatically. That's why it's important to read the Word. And if you're not in the Word every day, you're not going to see this. You're going to totally be blind to what's happening. And it's not, believe it or not, it's not even happening if you're not reading the Bible. A person who's saved and does not read the Bible is not going to grow. They're not going to exhibit any fruit at all. You've got to have the Word of God to grow. Okay, so that's why it's important to read the Bible. Not be deceived by some false prophet out there who's teaching, you know, a works-based salvation you know, under the guise of, well, if you're truly saved, you'll you'll exhibit the good work and the good fruit and all this garbage. And then a person thinks, well, I, I guess I have to do that to, to to prove that I'm really saved. And all you all he's doing is just trying to work for it now, and he's deceived. So no, there's no such thing as proving your salvation by your works because it you didn't it didn't take our work to get saved anyway. It took the finished work of the cross of Christ at the cross to to, to save us. So therefore, we don't do any works to prove we're saved. But see, as you read the Bible and study the Word and get into the Word of God and abide in His Word, then you'll 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 start changing. So the transforming work of God takes place as you read His Word. It doesn't just take place automatically. And to to, to say it does is, is just wrong. It's it's a false teaching. Okay, so that's why we need the Word of God, because it's so powerful. Okay, let's take a look at the verse, Hebrews 4.12. For the Word of God is quick. Quick means living. The Word of God is alive. And you know, that's, why, that's why it's so powerful, because it is alive. See, something that's dead it has no power. It has no energy. It has no vitality. It has no vibrancy. Okay, it has no fortitude. It has, it has nothing. But see, the Word of God is alive, so therefore it does have a, you know, a quickening effect on the, per, on the people who read it. Okay? For the Word of God is quick and powerful, 
and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So it's not only, it's not only like a sword, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. So that tells you how powerful it is. Now, let's, let's take a look at the Old Testament in the book of Ezekiel, and let's just see how powerful the Word of God is. And let's go over a few verses on this subject. We're going to basically read about seven or eight verses here just to see how powerful God's Word is. And actually, we're going to read about ten verses. Let's see. I'm just looking. No, we're just going to read until I feel led to stop reading. Start off with verse one. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were many in in the in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. So what does this represent? A dry bone is like a it's 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 dead. It's you know it's withered away and it's just it's just it's just dry and so what we're going to see here is God's word bringing it back to life and that that exhibits or that um, basically evokes how powerful He is. So let's keep reading, verse three. And He said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, Thou knowest. Again He said unto me prophesy upon these bones. Now look at that. The word prophesy means preach. So it's it shows you how powerful preaching is. See, preaching is very powerful. You know, you have false doctrine out there. You can preach against it and expose it, and then the power of God is, 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 is has been exuded there. And that's why it's very important to preach, and that's why we need, we need more preaching, because it's powerful. So he's saying there, prophesy or preach upon these bones. So he's showing you the effect of God's power upon, you know, that's found in preaching upon whoever's listening to it. And in this case, it just happens to be bones, dead, dry bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Now that, that's powerful. He took a dead bone and breathed life into it, just like he did, you know, Basically, the, the entire planet, the entire world, you know, the whole universe. He breathed life into, you know, human beings. And um, he did the same here to these bones to exhibit his power. Let's keep reading. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. And ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, now look at verse 7. Here's this concept of prophesying or preaching again. So I prophesied as... I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and, and, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. So the shaking represents his power as well. Okay, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, okay, prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus saith the lord now see this 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 phrase right here is a powerful phrase thus saith the lord that means this is something god has said god has spoken god has declared you know he's made a statement so thus saith the lord is a powerful statement now now it goes on to say come from the four winds o breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live so i prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up, and stood up upon their feet, and it, okay, <clears throat> an exceeding great army. So he took these dead bones, and basically made them into an army of living living creatures. So let's keep reading. We're going to stop at verse. Um, we'll probably stop at verse 14. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to bring up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live okay and I shall place you in your own land 
Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Now, that right there is an act of, of power, being, you know, like I said, being put into practice. It was something he performed. And this shows you that how, how powerful God is. He can take dead bones and he can give them life. Just like he can take dead people that are dead in their sins, people that are lost, and he can give them eternal life. Okay, same concept. So that's what the Bible teaches, and, and it, a God, God would have to be powerful in order to do this. He couldn't give us eternal life if he were not powerful. I mean, it, just, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. But the Bible says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And that's talking about believing on Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is powerful in that he was, you know, he took upon himself all our sins. He died for our sins. He was buried and then he rose again. That that's a an act of power. And then of course, you know, there's power in the word of God, you know, alone. So what we need to do is we need to be reading the Bible more often and quoting quoting Bible verses. And there's there's a pow, there's power in doing so. But there is no power if a person's not going to do this. If a person's going to neglect the Bible and not read it and just go through their life without without God's Word guiding them, directing them, then they're not going to have any power. They're not going to have any power over sin. They're not going to have any power over temptation. They're not going to have any power over, you know, the devil. And they're not going to have power over anything. They're just going to be like a walking, you know, weakling, you know, a welterweight. They're just going to, like, they, you know, they, they, they're not going to be able to endure or withstand anything. You know, they're not going to have any inexorable, you know, strength. And they're just going to be basically a sitting duck, in, you know, trying to get through this life. So that's why it's very important that we apply the Word of God on a daily basis and just know that it is very powerful. And I think a lot of, pe a lot of people don't understand how powerful it is. That's why they don't read it. You know, people that say, I don't really like to read the Bible much. That's not for me. Well, then you, don't, you just don't get it. You don't understand how powerful it is. You don't understand how much you need it. Now, let's take a look at one more verse that kind of, kind of, describes, you know, or a, a couple of verses here that describe just how powerful the Word of God is and just how important it is. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6. We'll look at a few verses here. Okay? And verse 11 reads, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So he's saying that if you put on the armor of God, if you apply the Word of God, you'll, you'll have the ability to stand against the wiles of the devil. And the devil's very powerful too. But we have more power than the devil if we just get into the word, okay? Now let's keep reading. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all, to stand. Okay? Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So he's telling you, it's this, the word of God is this powerful. You'll have the ability to withstand all the fiery darts of the wicked, not just some, all. Okay, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So, the Bible's describing the Word of God as the sword of the Spirit. It's not a physical sword; it's a spiritual sword. And the Word of God fights off, you know, all, all you know, all this evil and and everything else out there in this world that that could come against us. We, all we need is the Word of God to fight against it, like false doctrine. What do you do against false doctrine? You fight against it with the Bible. You use the Word of God. You know, uh, maybe you know atheism. You know, what do you do about that? Use the Word of God to fight it off. Prove, prove what an atheist is and what an atheist has. Nothing. No hope. You know, they're fools. Okay, then we've got, you know, the devil and temptation and sin. What do you do? You, you quote the Word of God. You know, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Greater is, me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ that, that strengtheneth me. So Christ will strengthen us. Okay, fight it off. And you use whatever verses you want to use. But my point is, we have, we have power, and it's right here. It's right in front of us. It's called the Word of God. And the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Any two-edged sword, excuse me. So it, it is a sword, but it's also sharper than any, any you know, physical sword. So that's, what, that's all I have. The Word of God is very powerful, and if people will just apply it, 
then they'll see they'll see what I'm talking about. And if you don't apply it, you'll also see what I'm talking about as well. You, you'll 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 fail. Okay, because we we can't we can't get through this life without God, without God's help, without you know Christ, and of course the Holy Spirit. But see, those that are saved have all have all these things. You have Christ living inside you. You have you have access you know to God, to His grace, and then you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You have all the power you need. But but we need the Word of God as well because that's our that's our tool. That's our weapon. So that's all I have, and we close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.